What's up, everyone? Welcome to another segment of New to Gaming. And I'm going to be walking you through kind of the beginning basics of an MMO today. I'm going to use Wildstar because that's the game that I've been playing lately. And uh, yeah, so we're just going to jump right into it. I reset the tutorials in the game because I've already been playing for a while and they only show up usually once. Some games show them every time you create a character, but uh, this one, once you've seen it, you can sort of check the box and then not see that one again. So, um, so I'm going to shift over here and uh, this is a warrior. Granok that I made um, right before the last one and yeah the last character that I made for the actual video didn't didn't get saved so we're just gonna go with this one so this is Plunkers as you can see his name here in the middle of the screen you're going to have your own it's called a unit frame but it's basically your health bar so this little this little area down here you've got your picture in the, if you look where my mouse is down in the screen, you've got the chat window. These are all kind of staples in this type of game. So you've got a chat window, which if you click in it, you can start typing. And something comes up like that. We'll get into chat in a second. But this is you, a little picture of you. This is your health bar. If you hover your mouse over, you can see your health actually shows up. So I start off with 470 health. That's great. Um, and that's my name. So this is me and all of this stuff here. So if I didn't know what I was doing, I would hit escape and go over to key bindings, right? So if I want to learn exactly what what buttons do what, I can find everything listed here. So even if you forget after the tutorial has shown you, everything is listed out here. Um, there's all kinds of action bars, whether you want to get on your mount or not, use potions, camera in or out, and chat reply. Uh, yeah, so here we go. We've got movement and all of this. So this is all listed right here. This is something to look for if it doesn't tell you. If, uh, if you don't have this, like if you hold down both mouse buttons, you'll move. The mouse usually moves freely on its own normally. If you use and hold down the left button, you can turn the camera, but your character will stay stationary. So I can see myself here. If I hold down the right mouse button and move, notice how my character moves with the camera. So there's ways to do and look basically however you, however you want. So if I want to move somewhere, I can hold down both mouse buttons and I'll move. Now, this is the tutorial. So the tutorial pops up, it shows you, it says for movement, use W, A, S, or D to get moving. And try holding down the right, right mouse button to turn a little bit faster. So I can turn myself as fast as my little mouse can move. And that's twitchy, but that's the kind of what you want to get up to. Initially, you may want to use A to turn your character left and D to turn your character right. And you can see it's that's as fast as you can turn. If something is sneaking up behind you and you have to spend a full second rotating to turn around to it, that's not good. But anyway, so WASD, if you look over on the left side of your keyboard, you'll notice that they form kind of the same pattern as the arrows on your keyboard, and they also fall into the same directional. So W moves you forward, S moves you back, A turns to the left, D turns to the right. It's also important to note that there are strafe. If you don't know what strafing is, you can look up the word. It probably has some specific meaning that, that applies to this, but basically strafing is sidestepping. So if I want to move my guy to the right or the left, all of the buttons are like right around in that area. So W moves me forward, S moves me back, D turns me to the right, E sidesteps me to the right, A turns me to the left, Q sidesteps me to the left. So all of your movement keys are all right in that area there. Um, so once you've seen the, the thing, the tutorial, you can say got it and move on from there. So from there, um, any people or anything in the game with an exclamation point over its head, or sometimes depending on the game, a question mark. Um, that means that they want to talk to you and that they have a quest or a mission for you. So I'll walk up to this guy, Deadeye Brightland, 
and I can either use my interact button. You see how there's this thing hovering here that says talk to Deadeye? Well, the interact button is the F key, which, like we did before, we can go into key bindings and look, interact, there it is as F. You can tell it, you can move, you can change all of these keys if you want to make it something different, but for now, let's just work with what the game gives us. So, if we want to talk to this guy, we can either hit the F button, or we can right click on it. And then we start to get into a conversation. So he talks, it shows up not only there, um, sometimes it shows up in the chat window too, but it looks like it's not there. So um, yeah, we talk to him. Usually there's a way to carry on a conversation with him and just get information out of him if you want to learn more about the mission that he's asking you to go on, or if you want to learn more about the world. Um, I, I highly recommend it because it helps you become immersed in the world and immersed in the game. Uh, it makes you feel like you matter, and that's really important in these games. So, there's also always a, a like an item in the conversation to move to the next step of the conversation to either accept the quest or learn more about the actual quest. And that, in this game, has an exclamation point next to it as well to sort of match up with the exclamation point over his head. So, we just came out of Cryo Crisis. So, this is an example of what I was talking about. If we want to move forward in the quest then I would select I'll help you find your wife if I would just want to learn like see figure out why he's looking for his wife I click here he tells me a little bit more her name is Sadie she's she's pregnant and she's in a cryopod and then because it looks like this place is a wreck as I look around I can ask what happened here I can learn more where's everyone else cryo sickness and so on and so forth if I don't want to accept the quest I can just hit not right now and go on with my life although at this early stage in the game you won't have anything to do if you don't accept this quest so I'll help this guy find his wife you get this done. shows that I've got something so it says okay this little window pops up it says meet the quest tracker in every one of these games there's a way of keeping track of all of the various tasks that you have in front of you and this is important because you, like my other character, my main character that I've been playing a little bit earlier today, has something like 25 or 30 open quests that people have asked me to do something, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'll get to that, and now I'm just inundated with things to do. Generally in these games, they'll put a cap on how many quests you can accept, and, and usually it's 25. I haven't found that in this game, but yeah. So they, there was a little tool tip that came up for this. It said if you don't know where to go for your quest, you can click on it and they've very nicely shown you an arrow and then you can follow that so I'm using W to move myself forward and he's down here waiting for me right that's the guy that we were just talking to oh so we got to him it says follow Deadeye Brightland and this little gear icon over here this shows me that I've got something to interact with Everything else in the world, like these boxes, you notice that I, as I move my mouse over them, except for this person, there's really no way to interact with any of it. Although it looks like there's a crate over here that I can interact with. Oh, looks like I can sit on it. So, looks like there's probably another one that I can sit on. So, but I, you can see things that you can interact with in multiple ways. One is looking for this little gear icon, which from a distance you may not see or it may not load in the game. Another is to hover your mouse over it. And as you see, as I move my mouse over things, there's a little toolbar in the lower left corner right above the chat window that shows me what exactly it is. It gives me a little bit of information about it. It tells me its name, what it is, and in this case, what level it is. There's this guy, Brightland. It tells me what guild he's in. And nothing else really. It looks like there's some other people over here. But you notice how this little console is glowing? That's another way that a lot of these games indicate that this is something that you can interact with. And not only that you can interact with, but you probably should. So this is a part of our quest. So if I click on this again, notice how the arrow points right at the thing that I'm supposed to go interact with. So I'm using the W key to move myself forward. Up comes a tutorial about interactive objects. It tells me I can target NPCs and objects with the left mouse button. So if I want to get this guy as my target. I left click on Deadeye Brightland and he t pops up over here on the right. So again, this is you on the left. Your target, or whoever you have selected, is on the right. 
and there's information there including their health um, just the same as yours but mostly you just want to know that for now that by left clicking on something that selects it and that makes it your target uh, if it has an icon above it try right clicking the mouse button or pressing F to interact with it and this is something that we just talked about right so I'm gonna right click on it my guy moves forward and you can see he activates it and the quest progresses to the next point and we learn a little bit we get to see more of what is going on here I've got the sound turned way down so you can hear me over the actual game and it looks like you see how this thing's glowing odds are good that wherever that is that's my next objective right it's something that draws your eye and so now I know that's where I have to go so I've read this I know F or right click is how I interact with things this quest is still active I don't know where to go so I click on it and it gives me an arrow generally speaking if there's a red circle on the floor you don't want to stand in it see I just got a message that says watch out for hostile telegraphs but I can only assume that that's what this is so if I'm standing in it yeah it knocks me down it does a little damage although it doesn't look like it did any damage a lot of these things at the beginning of the game are just there to teach you a little bit about the environment not hurt you or slow you down at all so okay here's the cryo control presumably this is this guy's wife and if we look inside we can see that's her so okay not that it matters if it is because this is the only thing we can interact with the quest progresses and again we're left to kind of do what what they request so at the beginning a lot of the, a lot of the quests are, are gonna have little cinematics probably in almost any game just to kind of get you engaged and to draw you in so we've got his wife out of cryo and he tells us something but he runs off and then because he ran off and his text window disappeared you can see it down here in the chat window as well so if we still don't know what to do we click on the quest thing and we can run and another pop-up for tutorial pops up it says in a hurry hold shift while running to sprint okay there we go see how I'm running faster there's this little meter that shows how much sprint I have left in video games they don't like it if you can just sprint like indefinitely because that's not realistic so they usually give you a limited amount of sprint to go and it looks like there's a timer on the tutorial so it'll disappear here in a second boom there it goes the screen clears up you notice that since we don't have anybody targeted there's no target window here there's no picture if I click on this guy he should have shown up here oh well so there you go so while we're standing here other things to take note of so you've got the chat window you've got the quest tracker over on the right side some games don't have this activated automatically and if they don't you should activate it um, there's always a player a player unit frame is what they're called and I think I told you that sometimes it's here sometimes it's up in the upper left hand corner uh, it's easier to see when it's lower in the in the window like this and it's unobtrusive so it's not blocking much so I like it down here so I wouldn't move it if I was able to uh, other things to notice that are on the screen that are staples up in the upper right hand corner you see a mini map and that's what this is called mini map it's a mini map because you're smart you know why because it's a map and it's mini so usually they're in the upper right hand corner sometimes they're in the lower right either way as you move see in this game they've got a little arrow that represents you so you know which direction you're facing and kind of a field of view so that you know what you see right other things that often show up on the mini map are people that you're in groups with uh, important characters or in this case quest items and if you see the one see how if I just move my mouse up there I hover it over there it tells me that the quest that is number one see the number down here that's where I need to go for it so if clicking this is to I don't know something that you don't like to do and you don't want the arrows you can just look on your mini map and it will tell you to some extent at least what's nearby you can zoom out or zoom in as the case may be and there's an icon on there to show you the overall map 
right? So this is what we've done. This is all of areas that we've been. Hitting escape will get you out of anything. Um, yeah, so the minimap is good. Personally, I like to play with it as zoomed out as I can get it. And there's a place here for options. You can size it. Look at how big you can get that thing. That's incredible. I didn't even know you could size it until now. That's pretty cool. All right, anyway. Um, so yeah, so those are the options. And as you saw, there's an open world map or a larger map view. So you've got your mini map. If you want to see the larger map and you don't want to move your mouse all the way up here to click on that icon, if you hit M in every game, almost every, M takes you to the map. And there's a lot of information here. We don't need to get into all of that just yet. Just remember that W, A, S, D are your friends. You can turn, strafe, move the mouse. You can, if you want to look at yourself, you want to left click. You just want to change the camera. Camera is left click, right click is moving yourself. All right, so if I'm moving, I can just move, hold down W and turn with the mouse. It's a much easier way to go about things and then if I have to avoid something I can strafe left or strafe right. Right? Because I'm doing all of my turning with the mouse. Nine times out of ten, the majority of the time that I spend in the game, I'm just constantly holding down the right mouse button. I'm not ever letting it go because it's just how I look places. So if I want to jump, jump is spacebar in this game. Um, in every game, really, jump is spacebar. So, so those are the basics, and that's the those are the tutorials that that have popped up in this first little area. So the next the next area, they want you to ride the tram, and you can see this little blue area that's highlighted for you to let you know that this is the place that they want you to go. So there's a lot of hand holding that goes on in the very beginning. Um, if you're playing with somebody who's an expert at the game, they might not be the most patient individual. If that's the case, definitely, I guess let me move it back to me. Um, if that's the case, definitely join up, start the game yourself, and play a little bit on your own without them there trying to egg you on and move you faster because it'll give you time to get comfortable with the controls, with the game, with just looking around and you can take your time to really kind of explore the area right so clearly it looks like these people have cryo freeze I mean there's a lot to see there's art in every area there's there's people interacting with each other a lot of times there's people talking to each other and if you want to give the game a real go this is the way to do it you you know this guy's talking to the patient and it, it, it in, I don't know what the word is for it, it's, it's slipping my mind right now, but it, you become far more engaged the more you let the world draw you in. So give it a chance to do that, get used to the controls, it's like anything else, you're going to be really awkward for a while. The beginning parts of all of these games are made with you in mind. They're made to make up or to give you the opportunity to be awkward and not have it really affect you. Now ain't the, time to the most important thing I think for new players to realize about MMOs are that you can't lose. There's no losing in an MMO. There's uh, consequently no winning, but there's no way to actually lose. You can die and you'll come back. It's not the end of the world. Especially early in the game, there's like no penalty whatsoever for dying. Except for maybe that you have to run back to where you were if you want to continue your quests. A little bit of time, don't worry about it, right? So get in, run around, look at things, zoom in, zoom out, play around, get a feel for it. It's like anything else, the more time you spend with it, the more comfortable you'll be. And yeah, I think uh, I think it's a good experience. So that's, that's just moving and move, kind of addressing the what's on the screen and what the what the default things are so there's obviously a lot of other buttons and from the inventory to the quest log which is often L skills which is K I mean there's like all of the buttons do something for the most part so in part of your playing around get in press buttons see what happens and you can't get yourself into trouble one thing to note, if you hit escape and there aren't any windows open, you'll get into the options here. And so 
if you don't if you didn't see a tutorial or you, you missed something there's usually a place to reset them and I could come in here and reset all if I wanted to um, I didn't do that I just went and selected the beginner ones and start and like checked all of them to make sure that they would pop up so that I could show you um, but if you if you get dragged through by your friend or significant other or whomever and you miss them you can come back in in a lot of these games and definitely this one select the specific one and view it and it'll pop back up for you so if you accidentally check one of these things that say don't show me any tutorials anymore there's a way to put them back on so that you can see them and benefit from them so I'm gonna leave you here because that was a long time just to be talking about uh, movement and such but Next time we'll get into a little bit of the combat and the basics of the game. I'm going to, uh, let's see, I'm going to move us into the, move us into the area. A lot of times transitioning from one zone to the next. Hang on, Sadie. We'll be there soon. There's a load screen that you have to deal with. Sometimes there's a cinematic, but very rarely. Because we're still into this introductory phase of the game. This, old ship's this is what we're, day. you know, this is how they continue to draw us in. Strange to think that we might just finally get a new home. I wouldn't exactly so we're on an old ship. I'm not going to make you watch that. If you want to play this game, I definitely recommend watching the cinematics. It looks like they're going to the med bay. I'm going to log out here and uh, and we'll pick up here when, when we get back before. Now, just actually one last thing just to show you. So I'm running. I'm remembering that shift makes me sprint and move faster. You'll find that if you're impatient as I am, you don't ever want to move as slowly as possible. You always want to go as fast as possible just to, you know, you want to get to from point A to point B. It looks like another tutorial popped up explaining what I did right at the beginning. The, the new quest is the orange exclamation point. If it's in progress, it'll be like a light blue or a white color. And then when you're ready to turn it in, like we are here, and you can see there will be a check mark above the character's head that you need to hand things into. Older games, you literally would take a quest from somebody and you'd have to return to that person specifically in order to hand it in and to complete the quest. In newer games, they allow you to, like using a phone or a communicator, they allow you to hand in quests remotely so you don't have to run out run back run out run back all the time and you can sort of stay in the action and continue to progress through the quest line so in this case it looks like there's two pages of uh, of this tutorial it explains the icons these are more icons um, this little chat bubble usually uh, some quests will send you out and they'll say go talk to so-and-so as the first step of sort of a series of tasks and so you'll go to try to find so-and-so and that person will have this little orange bubble over their head indicating that they're there to continue a quest not give a new one necessarily so so that's what to look for and that's another good tutorial and if I right click on him that hands in the quest and it looks like he's got a new quest for me as notated by the exclamation point there and if I take the quest, this is the reward that I'll receive, and he explains what I need to do. And again, if I want to learn more about cryo sickness, I can do that. Ask why he's, you know, if he's a doctor, and then okay, I'll go collect the serum. So that's it. And some of the tutorials show up here if you want to see them again. The quest tracker will organize your quests, tell you where to go, and even remember your birthday. I don't really know why it would do that, but like it says, only if it's part of the quest. So, there you go. So, that's a little bit of Wildstar. That's the movement and uh, some of the early tutorials. We'll get into more of this in next week's segment, so tune in for that. If you have any questions, let me know. If you have any games that you would like to... Uh, ask about. I've played a lot of them and I may even have some already installed so don't don't hesitate to reach out to me. I'm happy to talk to you about it. If you want to play with me I'm I have a lot of experience playing with people who are not so experienced so I'm happy to take it really slow with you and move at whatever pace you're comfortable with. I really enjoy playing with other people and I look forward to the opportunity to meet you and possibly play games with you. So let me know. Subscribe to the channel Tell your friends about this. 
Tell your friends about the game if you want to play this with them. It's a great game. The more I get into it, the more I like it. And uh, I guess I'll talk to you next week. Thanks a lot.